back in the cave. The cold cave. Oh boy, the cold cave. Let's get the boat, all the gear, all my gear ready to go. I gotta make it out to the coast <clears throat> again and get the get all my gear put onto the swapped onto the other boat and get that sucker out of fishing. Fishing, fishing. It's funny, people always ask me what I, 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 a lot of people say, would you rather, if you had to make a choice, would you rather guide hunters or guide fishermen? And I'll tell you what, one thing to take note of is, uh, I find, is guiding anglers is far more stressful to me than guiding big game. Because when you're on that boat, in that water, doing the same heat laps, or possibly sitting on the anchor, waiting for the helmet, and if there's no fish, there's nothing you can do about it. Absolutely nothing you can do about it. <clears throat> and it, and it kind of sucks, the odd, very odd time it happens. There's no action. And um, it can be kind of stressful because you, you, you have to be like a motivational speaker when you're a guy. No matter what it is you're doing, you, got, you are the one that has to keep it upbeat, fun, positive, work hard, never quit, and make things happen. And uh, people are spending good money to do that, right? And, uh, and if you have to actually give a shit, it can, uh, it can be challenging between the ears at times, especially once you notice, you know, like when you're fishing, when you're guiding anglers, and, you, and when it sucks, you know, everybody starts getting quiet, you run out of stories. And everybody's kind of, kind of sitting there bored, wondering if we're going to get anything. And then you got to try to stop yourself because as you're fishing a certain spot, you can't, you can't help yourself. It's like right, right here, right off this rock, we got a 42 pounder last year, whatever, right? Right here. And you go by that rock and nothing happens again. And it can be really, uh, can be really challenging. And um, it's not because of the guide, the fishing guide, knows how to catch fish, obviously. But if the fish aren't there, man, there's nothing you can do about it, and, there's, and it's so, it can be so frustrating. Now, if you try to compare that to guiding hunters in, when, you know, in the Rocky Mountains or wherever, when you're sitting there on the mountain, you can, you know, if you see you got a guy, he's hunting sheep, all right? And uh, it's not happening yet. You're not finding a mature ram, you're not finding any rams, but at least you can mix it up. You can take them, you can take your clients to some the most epic, unbelievable sights, views. You can show them moose. You can, you can start mixing it up and show them elk, grizzly bears, mountain goats, caribou. There's always something. There's always something real cool to see all day, every single day, no matter what, as you are going along that journey of trying to find and harvest what you came after, you know? So that's about the one major difference between Guiding anglers and guiding hunters is when you when I'm guiding hunters, I am confident I can blow their socks off every single day with something cool. When I'm guiding anglers, if there isn't any fish, <laughs> it can be very frustrating because there's nothing you can do about it, you know. But that is not that doesn't happen very often. There's always you can just pull something off, especially when you're when you're halibut fishing. But anyway. All those thoughts come to mind as I'm getting closer to go time for getting uh, getting the boat ready and getting out there and getting that, getting that going. But in the meantime, I got some voices over here. Sarah's at work. The place is pretty quiet. The animals are fed. And it is absolutely pouring rain out. And I mean pissing. Pissing rain. Um, all right, here we go. I don't know what this is about, but it's titled Important Message Preview Matter of Life or Death, Steve. All right, let's get this going. While well, it's pouring rain, I'm going to leave here. I'm going to get some more gear ready to go to the boat. I'm probably going to head out there tomorrow. The rivers are going to be blown up from all this rain. It's just pissing. Now, listen to this. Matter of Life or Death, Steve. That's a different kind of email title. Please be read by yourself first, Steve. Maybe this is a brother's of Scott H., the guy in Desert Hot Springs with his wife who thinks you're one great guy. Actually, we both think you're great. Remember I wrote you and told you how I came across your channel by accidentally leaving on YouTube when I went to the head and I heard my wife talking to her friend on the phone when I hear my wife say 
wow. And then her, tell her friend on the phone how she's looking, how she was looking one hunk of a guy on TV. And this is not something she's said very often. She must have been drinking. <laughs> I'm kidding, man. So getting my curiosity up, I had to see who she was talking about. So I hurried back to the living room where you were standing by yourself talking about Bigfoot. And they have been an interest to me all my life. So that was 10 months ago. And we've been avid fans ever since. Love the outdoors, fish and camping. Not much on hunting, only because I was never taught. And I think you remind my wife of her dad. He was a no-nonsense kind of guy who always spoke the truth and no one ever messed with him. He was a man's man, tough but funny, hard as nail kind of, kind as that. Just a real nice guy who wanted to be friends, who you want to be friends with, a lot like you. All right, enough of these kind words to me, man. Anyways, to my point in emailing you, Steve, and thank you for the kind words. I appreciate it. My wife, Jerry, had a stroke on May 1st this year. Fuck. When they got out of the hospital and cat scanned her. They found a tumor in her brain that was cancerous and had spread through her body. It had spread too far. No hope for a cure. I just found all this out all this just a couple days ago, and I'm devastated. But when I went to leave our home to get back to the hospital to see her again, she asked me to bring our fire stick. It's a device that gets all channels for any TV anywhere. Just in case you do not know, she asked so I asked her why. As she said, it's been a week since we've seen Steve on how to hunt. She needed her Steve fix. We both laughed for the first time in over a week. So I can only imagine you're like me in a way of putting you on the spot like this is not cool. I know this and I'm sorry if I do, but if there's any way you could wish her well on your show, I know it would mean the world to her and that would mean a lot to both of us. I know I'll be taking away time away from a share, and they're important. I know, but if you could just make it short and sweet, I thank you, Steve, I do. I do know that at least 20 to 30 people that have turned on to the show that watch almost every day will see it, not to mention it'll probably buy a smile on my wife's face for a week, and you can't get better medicine than that. If you feel you can't or won't do it, don't worry. It's just a thought, and I won't say anything to anyone if I don't see it. Thanks again, Steve, for all you do. I'm sure you have helped hundreds, maybe thousands of people get better from this. So, from one manly man to another, you're the best. Keep it up. Good work. Take care. God bless. Go ahead. Use my name, Scott H. My wife is Jerry from Desert Hot Springs, California, where I live, if you want. All right, Scott. It's too easy, man. Now, listen, Jerry. <clears throat> You got this. Sounds like you're a positive lady, that's for sure. I am the the uh, the power of prayer is very, very is very uh, powerful. I've learned firsthand, direct. I remember when I was dying, half a few years ago, being told I was dead, and there was a lot of people in a lot of churches around North America praying for me through my various friends that I had shared the fact with that I was not doing so good and I made it but I didn't I didn't uh, I wasn't fearing the death part I was actually getting kind of stoked you know in a way of thinking wow I wonder where I'm going this ride's gonna be crazy you know I don't want to start battling about that Jerry uh, it's pouring rain you know what I would like to do if I could is possibly take the camera and show you a whole bunch of cool shit around here if I could some amazing sights while you're hanging out in there, um, hammering on that battle, which I'm sure you are. Uh, maybe I could put some, I don't know, I could, there's nowhere I can really go. That I, I would like to show you some very cool places around here, but it's, I can't right now. It's just, it's, it's, you can't see anything. It's shitty out, and that's very unfortunate. But I'll think of something. But in the meantime, Jerry, keep it positive. You know how that works. I'm sure you are. Just keep it positive and fight and never quit, never give up, right? And um, <clears throat> there is, there's a lot of people here that are going to be sending out prayers for you, both of you, your family, and your health. And um, I would not be surprised at all if it made a big difference. Hmm. What to say, what to say. I'm stuck for words right now. 
Jerry, I, I wish, uh, I wish, I wish, <laughs> I just wish we could fix this shit. I wish we could, I wish we could make everything better for everyone, you know? But in the meantime, let's, uh, let's nestle in. We're all in the room with you right now, okay? We're all shoulder to shoulder, making fun of each other, smiling, and we're going to listen to some of these some of these email shares together anyway okay jerry so here we go this is all all these shares are going to be directed to you and everybody else here that's here at the same time is welcome to listen but we're all together in jerry's room right now and we're listening to people's voices together all right now listen to this alaskan sasquatch while fishing and first nations men hi steve my name is luke and i live in anchorage alaska been there a bunch, Luke. I'm 30 years old and I was born and raised here in Alaska. I've been in the outdoors fishing since I was very young and grew up as a fishing guide here. Please share my stories as I need to know if anyone else from my area has had similar experiences. There are other things in these woods besides Sasquatch. I need to know what they are and how to be prepared. My first experience happened when I was eight years old. It was around the year 2000. My dad and I were on a local river on the Kenai Peninsula looking for King Salmon mid-June. We got to the river on 9 p.m. and it was my dad's routine to fish all night from around 9 or 10 p.m. until early in the morning around 3 a.m. The kings run up the river really good in the middle of the night and during that time of year it never gets too dark, only for about an hour or so, then it starts to get light again. My dad fished all night as I sat on the camp chair on the bank playing my Game Boy, bonking his fish, reeling in some fish, and picking up old hooks and line off the riverbank. We each had our limit of two kings by about 2 a.m., so we packed up and started to walk the trail back to the parking lot. It was about a mile or so back to the parking lot. That time of night, there was no one else still fishing, and it would always creep me out having to hike back in the dark carrying the fish. That night, we were followed up by something that was breaking sticks hopping and puffing and making this crazy hooping and hollering sound. My dad said to keep close and it was just a bear. But I knew from the sound of my dad's voice and how his hiking speed increased that he didn't think it was just a bear either. See, that's the shit that sucks. So when they do that to innocent people, especially when they're on their way home, right? It just doesn't make sense to me. Another time while driving the dirt road, out from that same river around 4 a.m. or so, we both saw this figure on the side of the road. It was white slash gray, no eyes, no mouth, or nose, and it was very skinny, just standing on the side of the road like a hitchhiker would. We slowed down as we got close, thinking it was a local guy or something, but as we got closer, we both realized it definitely was not human. We looked at each other with wide eyes, and say at the same time, what the hell was that? After we pass it, my dad steps in the gas and we go flying down the dirt road faster than we ever had before. One summer while working with the Parks and Recreation Department when I was 21, I was on a crew with a, <clears throat> with a native Alaskan guy, First Nations, who was about 50 or so. One day we get to talking and he asked me about a sticker I have on my van. It's of a Sasquatch holding a fish, he asks. Why do you have that sticker on your car? Do you believe in Sasquatch? I said that I do believe, and that there was a lot of stuff in the woods I have no clue about, and that not many people like to talk about. It. He told me where he was from, Dillingham. They called him the Hairy Man, and that he's seen a few. He said around Dillingham they are not friendly, and to be careful while hunting or fishing in the deep woods. He told me a story of when him and his wife went out on their boat up the river to go fishing. They pull off into a back channel and go up a slough looking for fish. They get back in the slough and his wife says, Stop! Look! And there was a hairy man standing in the water looking straight at them. He cuts the engine and it just stands there looking pissed like they had blown up his fishing hole. He takes a few huge steps and is out of the slough and makes this crazy loud roar and is gone within seconds, within 10 seconds. They say to each other, Whoops, I guess this is his fishing spot, and turn the boat around and head back down river. I asked him, why do people talk about this more? Because people need to know about these things. He said, 
The white man just laughs at the native people's stories and calls it folklore and dismisses his people as crazy. So why even try to tell them any more? I nodded and agreed. I heard you read a story once from a guy telling you about all the different types of these Sasquatch and beings and where about the different ones live. He said all the ones in the Yukon and Alaska are very dangerous, not friendly. Can you please tell me what you know about the Alaska Sabe and the other things in the woods that are dangerous? I'll also look in the comments if you read my story. Thank you, Steve, you're a good man. Luke from Alaska. P.S. I'm a huge steelheader and I love the video you posted on May 11, 2022. You hooked a few steelhead back to back. Here in Alaska, we have great steelhead fishing. We have great steelhead fishing still, thank God. Tight line, Steve. Woo. Okay, Luke. Um, I think I. That sounds familiar too. I've heard of a few people who said they're dangerous in Alaska, but that's like maybe two, maybe two or three. So does that convince me that these beings are dangerous in Alaska? No. Um, the Nahanni Valley in the Yukon and Northwest Territories, sorry. Um, the Headless Valley where a lot of people have been gone missing and shown up with their heads lopped off. Who knows who or what that is, but they are definitely whatever was was or has gone on down there, whoever was doing that was doing that to make a statement. 100% a statement for every other human being to basically F off and don't come here. That's a pretty good way to do it, <laughs> right? But anyways, that's all I know about that. I don't, I don't know any direct, you know, is that bay? Oh man, my brain's, my, my brain's just too jam-packed right now. Sometimes my memory's spot on, sometimes it isn't, but that bay. Where is that bay? Near Seward, Alaska? Anyway, where their a whole town is apparently ran off. Remember that one? You will be able to find more information about that from your, from your locals in Alaska without a doubt. Or you do a little digging online, but probably, probably better off to find that local, local knowledge firsthand so they can see it right to your face and fill you in, right? But if you listen to David Pilatus, um, as an example, there's a lot of screwed up shit going on on this planet today that we are not informed of. And why aren't we informed of it? I firmly believe it is because the creepy sons of bitches who need and want, want and need to be and are in control of what we know only, only pass on to us what we need to know to to continue us to be numb between the ears. That's all they want, that's all they need. It's like a, another very educated, very successful man once told me privately in an email, I'm sure it won't be a bad thing to share this one little tidbit from which I was sworn to secrecy with all of his emails, but let's just say there was a person, basically right at the top, who said to him, quote, the government does not care about anything except control of the labor to appease the entity. And that person stressed on the government does not care about anything except that, right? So knowing that, um, it's up to us to find out the truth about everything ourselves with each other, amongst each other. It's the only way. It's the only way. You're not gonna find it from that effing ridiculous programming tube or in the classroom. It's not gonna happen. Rambling, got two coffees. <clears throat> but anyways, buddy, uh, I would say strongly suggest you start talking to your locals about that. Um, I'm sure somebody's going to pipe up in the comment section below. But basically around the world, people have been terrorized, tormented. Homes banged on, rocks and shit thrown at them. Stuff thrown through the windshield of their vehicle. Quads flipped over backwards. Um, it's endless, right? But I do not think that just because it's Alaska, you're in any more risk than anywhere else. But that's just me. Um, yeah, and as far as seeing the skinny being, unfortunately, that has been reported numerous times from other people around the globe. Unfortunately, because me, do I want that to be real? No, who would? Who would? But I would be a very irresponsible dumbass to not listen to my fellow men when it comes to this shit being reported. I do not pick and choose what is real or not is going on in this lifetime, I'll tell you what. But I will, sure as hell, I'm going to listen to everybody. And if I hear the same thing, 
from people who aren't connected around the planet, I'm going to give it a lot of attention and I'm not going to forget it, right? And as far as people laughing goes, uh, there's nothing funny. There's nothing funny as an example of the statement, I just saw a Sasquatch. Boy, that's pretty funny. Yeah, that really brought down the house, didn't it? There's nothing funny about, about anyone saying that. So keep in mind, when people laugh, it's because they're scared. There's no other reason, about, reason for laughing at anything when people report it honestly. Scared people, scared honest, good people report it. There's nothing funny about it. So don't forget, you guys, all you people that are scared of being laughed at, just remember that when the people laugh, they are scared. And that's a fact. But anyway, there you go. As far as the steelhead goes, yeah, I'd, man, I'll tell you what, if I could be up there at the same time, I'd jump right in there with you and you could take me and drag me around all over the frickin' place and I won't stop casting. <laughs> I'd be interested to know how many people out there fish Kodiak. A friend of mine has a fishing lodge out there, but it's geared up for salmon. And I can't remember if there's steelhead on Kodiak or not. I'm guessing there must be, right? I'm going to imagine. I'd love to go fishing there. Now, moving along, hope I didn't miss any questions in there. Sometimes I lose myself with these ridiculous babbles, right? Yeah. Okay, here we go. What else do we have? As we're all together in Jerry's room right now, side by side with you. <laughs> Hope nobody's got any gas today. I'm <laughs> kidding. Now, all right, here we go. Let's get into another one. And I'm, these, are, these are all going to be recents right now, right? Because I haven't had, sometimes I'll try to go through, I'll pick out, I'll just say six. I think we do an average five or six. And I'll just going to glance at it. Yep, haven't read it. I'll mark it as one and then one through six, put them at the top of my list, and then I bla blast them out. And, uh, I don't know why, but I'm finding that I'm finding some duplicates in the bottom of this long list. I don't have time to, to go through them and I don't want to screw up. So I'm going to take, these are very, these are recent, probably emailed in today or yesterday. Okay. Now listen to this. It is titled Two Dumbass Teenagers. Hey Steve, love your content, sir. Hearing the testimonies of your viewers has called on me to tell my story. I'm from Arkansas, born and raised. Hillbilly pride, my friend. The natural state is obviously mostly a woodland area. Arkansas, I've been there full of areas for strange events to happen, and they do. We all have heard old stories around campfires growing up. So today, I'm 48 years young. My name is Corby. When I was 13 years old, my best friend Wes and I convinced Wes's grandfather to let us go out and do some squirrel hunting. So after a few minutes, he agreed. So, Mr. H, who is a solid outdoorsman, takes us to his hunting spot that he had hunted for multiple years. You know, when an old timer tells you about a hot spot, you have to go, right? So Mr. H drops us off and lets us do our thing. So here we go. Two, two 13 year olds, fearless, armed and full of piss, head out to do some hunting. So this area is in the northeastern part of Arkansas. I'll keep the location anonymous to protect the old one. I never had any thought at this point in my life about Sasquatch. It wasn't something that was on my radar, you know? Well, after about 10 minutes of walking, we decided to split up. My buddy Wes had a 12 gauge and I had a 22 rifle. A couple of killers, haha. Uh -huh. We split up and walked a parallel path to each other. We were about 10 meters apart moving north. To my right, I noticed something extremely large in a thicket. So I slowed my pace and dropped to a knee and kept it in my sights. With my 22, lol. We have brown bears here, and at first thought, and at first I thought, okay, that'll be brown black bears. And at first I thought, well, hell, we have to run up on a bear, and of course it's a mother. This could be really bad. My buddy Wes moved back to my location as he spotted as it spotted it as well. We stood there with this being in our sights. We had to be about 60 yards from it. That's freaking close. Then out of the blue, the being went from being about black bear size to something I can't explain. I guess it stood up. 
If I had to guess, I would say it was maybe 10 to 12 feet tall. So at 13, and being foolish, we got scared and opened fire on it. We both unloaded our firearms at it. After about a minute of standing there in silence, the smoke cleared. Steve, we walked over to the location where it was standing and there was nothing, and I mean nothing. No footprints, no blood, no hair, nothing. Only thing we actually found was an impact spots was the impact spots from the bullets. It was like it was a hologram of a Bigfoot. It just vanished. We decided it was definitely time to leave. On our way out of the woods, we stopped at the tree line, and then the tree knock started. I guess he was telling us goodbye. It was like a chameleon, and way more advanced than we were. I'm so glad he was smarter than two young idiots with guns. You couldn't pay me today to shoot a one. Anyway, man, thanks for your time. It was a cool experience that I'll never forget. Thank you for what you do, Steve Corby. And there's another one of those ones that's going to make a whole bunch of people go, holy shit. And it's going to make even more people go, seen the same thing. It's going to make another small handful, handful of people go, get off the crack pipe, you lying bastard. <laughs> right? And as far as those people go, I even know why they're here. But anyway, um, that is an experience that the majority of the people who make themselves public in front of the camera and acquire experiences do not want to hear that and they don't want to repeat it and they don't want anybody to talk about it and they will not accept that as fact. They are adamant that these are um, <laughs> animals that run around the woods rutting and peeing and eating and nesting <laughs> and oh and migrating too, right? Sorry, it's not the case, but anyway, I will share this story, of course, Corby, as I absolutely 110% believe you. It's been reported way too many times and from people of all different social flavors, including scientists. I've seen it happen firsthand straight up, right? So, how do, how do you explain that one? Well, so far it can be explained by your your vibration, your energy vibration, right? That is, I'm convinced that's what's going on when these beings pull the shit off. Have I seen it? No. Do I want to see that? No, I'm good. I'm good myself. I'm sure a lot of people, other people want to see it, but I'm good. <sighs> it's a crazy ride. It's a crazy ride. I'm all, I wonder how many people out there have seen that exact same thing and they still are far too nervous and secure to come forward to share it with anybody. But they're content just to sit back and listen and soak it in from everybody else, which is that's fine. That's absolutely cool. But if you want to, uh, you've seen something like these young fellas saw, share it. Speak out loud and share it. There's nothing to be ashamed of, okay? It's, this shit's going on. There's, there's nothing we can do to... There's a one person who can laugh loud enough to make this stop. It's not going to happen. The poor people that laugh instead of using their brains, well, they're just going to sit in the... They're sitting in the back of the room alone. Nothing we can do for them. But smash forward and encourage more people to speak. More people. Speak out loud. Quit being scared of people. Okay? Thanks for sending that, man. Appreciate it. That is quite the experience. Um, well, this sounds like it might be very interesting. This title. This is title. An update on my post encounter counseling. Sweet. Dear Steve, hope you're doing well. I'm not sure if you'll remember my story, as I know you're extremely busy with getting the people's voices heard. I emailed a couple of weeks ago, and you read my story, where I fell out of a tree and knocked myself out, only to be woken up and find myself faced with an infant, and then eventually a mother savage. Remember it. Before I go any further, I'd like to personally thank you and all the people in the comments who were so, so kind to me regarding my experience. As many members of the club have no return will attest, these are not always encounters that one can walk away from with fond memories. The response to my story was heartwarming and succinct, 
and the responses to those in the comments were uplifting. All of these things have allowed me to take the next step. This is good news. Love reading it. Keep going. I took the advice he gave me of bringing up my experience to my counselor in a way which made, which made me comfortable. In my last session, two days prior to this email, my counselor and I ended the session in the same way that we always do. She allows me to speak my mind and almost let me ramble about anything and everything. It is a way of making me feel calm, should I ever feel anxious when talking about any negative emotions. I asked her out of interest what her thoughts on Sabe slash Bigfoot, etc. was. To cut a long story short, she said to me that she is indeed a believer, though she, is, she hasn't personally experienced such a thing. I decided to be truthfully honest and show her your video where you responded to my story and her reaction was short but reassuring. I wish you had told me sooner, that's what she said. She almost seemed insulted. She wasn't angry but she was certainly made clear that she wished I was open and honest. I did explain to her that I thought I would sound crazy, to which she responded, quote, I'm here to help you, not judge you. If you saw a sabbe, you saw a sabbe. If you saw a bear, you saw a bear. Whatever you say it was, if it was real enough to scare you into not going back into the woods, then it is real enough to speak to me about, end quote. By her understanding, she said that there is no way for us to truly know or comprehend what could be out there, and that she that we as people shouldn't be so narrow-minded when it comes to the existence of such things. We didn't have an in-depth conversation about Savvy or anything, but I could tell that her words and feelings were sincere. She also stressed to me that I get back into the woods as soon as I feel comfortable. I can gladly say that I've somewhat taken the plunge and arranged to go on a small walk in the forest with my uncle for the first time since the incident. However, there's one small detail. I have to first tell him about what actually happened. He knows that I fell from the tree and injured myself, but he doesn't know what I saw. I thought I'd email in this. I thought I would email in as this may serve as a little beacon of light and hope to those who are struggling to go back into the woods. Be truthful with yourself as much as you can. I'm not saying that this will, quote, cure me, but I feel positive about having taken the steps towards healing. I still feel that it'll be a long time before I do any camping or solo hiking, but baby steps are better than standing still. I am effed up and letting it stop me from living my life. Oh, sorry, I am fed up of letting it stop me from living my life. I think that hearing you tell me that I should at least chance it with my counselor, as well as those in the comments who told me to be strong and honest, has given me a different perspective. Sometimes you need a metaphorical kick up the ass from someone. If all goes well, I'll email you sometime in the future to let you know how it went. Sorry for the length of the email. God bless you, Steve, and God bless everyone else in the community. All the best. Rochelle? Rochelle or Rachel? <laughs> R-A-C-H-E-L. Listen. I'm so proud of you for doing that. That is so good, and I'm so glad that you were generous enough to share all that with us. You're helping a lot of people, all right? It's you that's helping a lot of people. And uh, I don't know, maybe try, possibly, drop this email, drop this video on your uncle, and ask him if he would listen to it from beginning to end. And then, and then you can, uh, not, if it'll, I don't know, I'm not saying this is the right thing to do or not, I haven't a clue. But if it possibly makes things easier for you to break the ice with your uncle, then give it a shot, right? And as a direct message to your counselor, I would say to you, ma'am, uh, thank you so much for, for reacting and holding yourself the way you do. That is greatly appreciated. And you're going to bring a lot of relief to a lot of people out there who are probably in the same predicament of being scared to share. But so you can take note. We have had people in the past email in that they spoke to a counselor, told them what they saw, and one person actually started being asked about how much of a competent, or no, they, what happened? They started looking into the person to see if they're a competent, competent parent. Started questioning their parenting skills and how safe their kids were from them because of what they unfortunately saw in the woods. So. Don't be insulted. Don't be surprised why someone might not want to share with you during a session what they saw in the woods because 
The majority of society has shit all over those people in the past and made it not a safe topic and not a safe thing to talk about. And that's a fact, right? Obviously, I'm sure you can, I'm sure you understand that too. But um, we have had, okay, here's another one. How about that elderly woman who was, the family put her in a mental institution because of what she would not stand down about what she saw. She would not, she would not not keep it secret. She would not keep her mouth shut. She told her family what she saw. And she's seen a few times, I think in the yard. Anyway, the sad shit eating fact about that is she was put in that institution and one of the truly, tr somebody with true mental disorder beat her to death. That's how she, her life, her journey ended, was one people who were close to her, deemed her as crazy for coming forward, what she saw, put her in the home, and she got beat to death, and she died alone, alone feeling, probably, how, how, how could you feel more alone than that, right? It's pretty disgusting. Sad. It's a sad story. But anyway, um, carrying on. For all you out there listening to this and possible other counselors who may be listening to this, listen, <laughs> keep listening to these people, all right? Take it into account and please, please, please support all these good, honest people, innocent people who've had all these shit-eating experiences and don't have anywhere to go because our society is such Western culture. I don't know about the rest of the world, but I'll, care, I'll tell you what. The bullshit we've been fed, the lies, I've had it up to the nuts with it. I've absolutely had it up to the nuts with the bullshit. So tired of it. I'm biting my lip. I'm gonna bite my lip. All right. These are great shares today. They are every day. Can't get enough of it, you know? Can't get enough of it. Jerry, how are you making out? I hope you're comfortable. Quite certain you're not alone, for real right now today, but if you are, don't forget, we are all squashed in your little <laughs> hospital room, shoulder to shoulder right now. All right, we're all there, in there with you right now, today, as we get these shares up. So, let's get another one going here. Man, it is freezing out, it's three degrees. Three degrees out. What was it, middle of May? Global warming. All right, I don't know what this is going to be, but the market is red. Excuse me. Remember, I'm going from the top of the list down right now. Just to guarantee I don't do any repeats today. Note to say thanks. We need your channel to what many are... We need you to channel what many are thinking about. Excuse me. Steve, here in Alabama, we know these things are in the wood. My family's from West Virginia. My mother spoke on not going out in the woods alone due to the woolly boogers. My son saw the Alabama white thing loping, running in a pasture late one night, and it reminded him of a kangaroo. Very strange movements until it cleared a barbed wire fence and then went on all fours very quick. I've been having have been having things in the woods go weird since I was 11. Seen the shoulder of something hairy following us on a ridge over the Warrior River. I know where that river is. Been there. Heard tree knock last year in the same area. Now in South Alabama, we hear things and we have, we have wolves too, along with coyotes and real swamp monkeys. Not Bigfoot, but small apes, true. Other times, too, studied water in the Everglades, deep in, and I've heard some noises many times like a growl. And the knowing you're not alone. I want to thank you for the time spent. I hope it comes back to you many times. Bless your wife for putting up with you. Oh, well, she seems to cook like a dream. The Rougarou is real. Carry large weapons. I like a 12 gauge with those small tank buster rounds. Be ready to shoot unless they are holding a white flag. LOL. F Harry and the Hendersons. There are monsters in the woods, and we must not live in fear of them. Trudeau and or Biden, both bitches. Yes, they are. All right, man. 
the wolf thing. That, that's an eye raiser for me. Uh, wolves in Alabama. I'm not going to be the one that says no way, but I can tell you this. Um, if you want to lure them in, all you got to do is start a bait pile. They're going to come. All canines cannot say no to their nose. All right? It will come. And wolves, I've, I don't know how many wolves I've, I've, I've intentionally gone after wolves at trail cameras I don't know how many times in the past and I've had success basically almost every single time. So I'm saying, I'm sharing that to let you know that if there are wolves in Alabama that you can bait them in and you will, you will get them on a trail camera to prove it. All right, other than that, it's gonna be a pretty tough one. It's gonna be a pretty tough one to convince many people in Alabama that there's pack of wolves running around. But do it. If you believe there are wolves there, start a bait pile. Put the camera up high off the ground, angled down, not at eye level with the wolves. All right, that gets them on the camera. And if you do get them on the camera, share it with me and I'll share. I have a lot of friends in Alabama and I'll share it with them. For sure. There's definitely coyotes down there. I think there's a few bears in some parts of the state. Should be anyway. And without one a doubt, there are these beings running around down there, whether they're full time or not, having a clue, but they've been sighted. For sure. But anyway, thanks for sending that in, man. Um, I gotta get going, I got some other things to do, but I will be coming back here later today. Maybe I'll bring the camera equipment with me, possibly. And uh, maybe I will, you never know. If it, if it breaks, because I got, I got a little bit of shit to do today. And if it breaks, then, um, oh, should I share another one? No, I think we'll cut the shit shy. Cut the shot right now. But if the weather breaks and I go somewhere cool, Jerry, I'm going to take you there. I'm going to show you something cool that you've probably never seen ever before on Vancouver Brown. A site, something. All right? And then, uh, in the meantime, what a bunch of great people there are here. There are, there is, a, there is a very, very large group of real good people that come and frequent this channel. Absolutely appreciate every single one of you. And uh, this is your channel. This is your channel. The people. The people made this channel. <sighs> All right, it's freezing. I gotta get that truck fired up, get the heater going, get my ass in gear, and I gotta go get more gear for the boat, and I gotta start tying leaders and getting all my shit ready. So, after that, I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna share more. I'm not gonna stop. There's a lot of bullshit going on on the planet right now, especially in my country. And I'm gonna add this in. It's a little off topic, but I have to do this. It cost me over three grand last night. <laughs> so uh, there's this prick who is in the Trudeau government in Canada who are, they are very filthy, dirty people. And uh, they have been systematically taking away the rights of Canadians, lowering the quality of life for all Canadians. Making it, making it very difficult to be a, what we're supposed to be as a free human being with choice, living this life to our fullest. And what they did while COVID was going down, they sleazily slipped in some new gun control laws where they're absolutely hammering on good, hardworking, innocent people, legal gun owners, and um, under the disguise of, it's gonna, the quote, it's gonna help the RCMP track the bad guys and the guns they use in crimes. Could you imagine? Can you imagine? I mean, you cannot be treated with as much disrespect as that alone because what these, gov these people in government are actually believing is that, that we are so stupid that we would believe that allowing them to track our gun purchases and our guns would directly track the illegal movements of criminals with guns. <laughs> Holy shit. And yes, that just went down and is going on today in Canada. How amazing is that? The deadline's May 18th, so all you in Canada right now, you have till the 18th of May to purchase some legal firearms that these dirty, filthy pricks will not know about if you get it in before May 13th, or May 18th. All right, so get on it, get on it. I definitely, 
I definitely uh, took care of business yesterday, for sure, myself. So anyway, um, there's a little tidbit I had to share on the planet today, is that the Canadian government is taking away the rights to own firearms right now, so it is time to get whatever you've been procrastinating about purchasing, get it done before May 18th. All right, I'll be back shortly.